Daka says, thank you for all you do. Yes, it is difficult to sit here eating popcorn, watching somebody else work. I do get why all of the reactors on YouTube do it, and this might be the start of something for me. This might be that moment where I realize, holy shit, why am I making original content? Why am I doing it? Why am I playing RPGs for hours? Why am I playing MMOs for days and then making analytical content and trying to entertain people when I could just watch somebody else who's already done it and just say what I think about it and make more? So much easier. This is the start. This is what it is. Looking forward to Lazy Man Mode and Moonscape was the start, okay? This, when they contacted me and said, Josh, do you want to watch somebody else stream and just talk over it? I'm like, I was born for this, baby. Now... I understand that a lot of people are watching the stream because live anything has the potential to be super cringe. It does. Let's be real, okay? It can be super cringe. Every, there's an old saying, everyone goes to the theatre because tonight might be the night the wire breaks. As in, we want to see people fail. There is this lovely, beautiful schadenfreude that everyone wants to see something be cringe and terrible. So we will watch the stream and we will hope for the best. But if it goes wrong, I will be here to pick it up. That's the plan. Everyone watches Formula One because there might be a crash. All right? All they've got to do is be perfect for the next 110 minutes. Not hard. Classes, you know? Because last time they were talking about how there's so many more new ascendancies. Uh, I think maybe spreading them around a little bit with different characters would be pretty cool. Yeah, adding a little bit more distinction there. Like, yeah. you know. What are we watching? We're watching the Path of Exile 2. Well, Exile Con which is where they're going to reveal a lot of stuff about the next Path of Exile expansions and some information about Path of Exile 2. <laughs> but he is he is right, though, in, in the sense that yep. GDG always... <laughs> Sorry, Mockery in chat just said, I just want the drops. I've muted the site. I'm listening to a different podcast. You know what? Fair enough. I respect the honesty. I appreciate that. If you guys just want drops... Look, this isn't school, okay? You don't have to be here. This is more like university, where you can turn up, sign in, and then just leave and do something else if you want to. That's fine. I'm not going to shout at you for that. You want to have this playing on the background in a second monitor? Totally okay. You can do that. We will have uh, some kind of a narrator leading us through a story. I would really love that within the PoE2 story and just seeing what just... so Because there is such a, uh, a big office now. Like, What can that many people bring... Cameraman really earning his cut on yeah, that I, zoom I, in. That's actually what was Why does it feel like I'm eating moist them? gummies? Like, it's popcorn. In Poe One, you get your character kind of you've got to eat popcorn when something exciting happens. Throwaway line every so often. NPCs there and having like a little bit more interaction with the environment. I'm like, I'm excited for a potential, you know, improvement in the storytelling side of things there, yeah. especially mm -hmm. with the like flavor ooze that we saw in previous and logic. Uh, iterations of the Poe Two stuff that we've seen. And yeah, this stuff behind us, I don't really know. What to, you guys can't see the top of this. But there's like a giant blood creature, and there's a creepy head up there, and a spine. Yeah, they've uh, they've blown it away with the uh, decorations this year. That's very oh, impressive. So that looks a lot like my um, my that temporary dungeon think, uh, that I have built. One of the things I would love to see, and always always hope to see, is cutscenes. Dorian, I think I'm here for the Oblivion NPC TikTok action. If ever the time for them to have big cutscenes. <laughs> that short is gonna haunt me. I want to keep moving my own camera, so <laughs> I'm like on the to look like it was on the, the sofa with be really them. Cool. Like I want to sit with these guys. Yeah, we there more, we go. Right? I'm with them. I'm hanging out. We're just just four dudes, just four dudes hanging together, talking poe. Just four dudes hanging out on a sofa. Do they want some popcorn? There's debris and stuff flying everywhere. Should I try and? Than what we've seen previously, and they started doing that in PV1 a little bit with like they reworked to Brutus and him kind of smashing the camera cuts back. Man, really terrifying. Oh, yeah, Brutus Brutus some void popcorn smashing through the prison and chasing you through doorways and stuff like that. So, more, spectac more spectacular moments like that. Something I definitely think we're going to see a lot of for sure. But definitely looking forward to that. Void corn. Um, I'm trying also, to offer. Uh, interested your thoughts on the so what we've seen in the past about the skill system again, things could be changing a lot. But that's something I've been particularly um, interested num, in. Num, is num, num, num. This change to uh, being able Take to have it. access to more well have it if you want it. skills and then maybe want a it. gameplay style I'll have that it. supports using those a little bit more. Oh, so a bit more opportunity okay. for situational combat. Not everything has to be like a super hard fight, but you know, the occasional moments where you guys on the like, sofa. 
you have a little bit of back and forth with the monsters, and that gives you the opportunity to use that second or third or fourth Hong extra well-linked skill that you've got access to now under this new Hong system, Kong? if that's the way they're going. Do you guys have any thoughts on the skill Didn't system? Didn't even have a chance like to, to offer the guy at the end. Um, I mean, yeah, part of the thing you were kind of alluding to is also like combinations. Do you of want skills. some so popcorn? Things like Frost Nova, uh, Ice Nova, and um, Frost Bolt, like interactions with Stop skills. Stop moving. Can be a bit clunky Do you want to put it in your hands? When done right and with the right Do you want this or not? You, it feels really good. I will eat it if you don't. So th things like that would be really Is cool. the popcorn um, green? Apparently, sure. it's golden. Um, yeah, I'm trying to already, let him smell it. Feels pretty good smell and, the popcorn. Uh, just, just more skills as always. You know, how could you not just want more skills? Apparently they don't. Um, but if they're doing the skill linking I've just joined what's going on. I'm trying to offer them some popcorn. Disposal, they do not want it. Just interesting to see how you can incorporate I'm a bit offended, um, the different personally. combos. Because you have to make a lot of choices. You can't just have everything. Be ignored, yeah, the so void. All of a sudden, um, you have to... Build into never a things never and ignore the void the right things at the right times and i think that makes for a much more dynamic gameplay you yeah. know what i think i'm gonna be real i think it's i'm reacting a bit to too hard for sure, yeah. i think i'm putting a bit too much effort in i'm just gonna sit on my phone for a bit when it comes to sockets i feel like yeah. back in the day it was like oh if you're playing a summoner you're I'm just gonna, gonna watch a lot of videos with that guy that puts various things like in jars of alcohol literally is anyone else getting all of those recommended to them i left something in something in a jar for a week or until something interesting happens what an absolute legend god i love him you're gonna sit here like this for a bit not used to reacting i can't do it i can't not do it i've got to thank you thank you for the popcorn you're welcome for the popcorn i'm glad you enjoyed it just looked up shocked expressions every 30 seconds and, uh, that, i can nice just yeah i'll just react like that just every now and again just be like advantage of like different items that you find and yeah that as you're going have a little bit more freedom a little bit more kind of breathing room than what we feel like we have with the skills there right we go now. what about you Nugi? No, I, I was about uh, to say I've nearly nailed the O face like that, be the main but then I realized that saying I that would give you a sound bite, the whole re and I don't want you to have that. That's a bad idea. Thanks for the thumbnails. You You're welcome, Visa. Ground, I've got you. And you can just immediately thumbnails are done for the year. Better, there's no taking out the gems anymore. <laughs> Again, <laughs> whoever hired me is there sat there going, Josh, no, don't say O face really on good, the restream. That's not. That's not what we want. I'll, I'll message the dude. I'll be like, hey, hey, are we nailing? Am I nailing it or am I nailing it so far? How's it going? You happy with this? The message be like, is it going well? <laughs> I'm like, doing well, Dad. Is this good? No uh, but no, to be fair, they would love to do it. Items for different combat. <laughs> 101 I'm not 101 yeah, percent based. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I going to play PoE too? Yes. Shorter gap between like the content you're doing and then the reward you're getting for it. Whereas the Without like a doubt. the reward that comes, you know, a long time down the line after a lot of stuff is realized. That's a lot harder for a lot of people to. Mm. You think I have a good camera and you can't look away from the sweaty chest? Okay, look. Two things. One, it's very warm in this room. It's very warm in England. Two, I could change that, but I'm not going to, all right? I know my audience. I know what you guys want, you awful, terrible people. It's okay. I'll keep it there. Josh looks like the average historian talking about global warming. Well, you know, it's globally warm in this room. I'll tell you that much. He's on to us, you filthy person. I'm at least wearing shorts. I'm wearing jeans. Can I pay you to read stuff so I can fall asleep? Absolutely. What do you want me to read? <laughs> Global warming. Localized entirely within your room. Yes. Can I see it? No. Yeah, that was one. Yeah. Read a book. <laughs> Let's move away from that. Prove it. Prove that I'm wearing what jeans. What would you guys like to see out of a, if it was the final, a final Why do you guys never believe me? It might not be. They might be doing more, but... Yeah. I mean, I, I still think Why it's Why do you guys always one. make I've me prove it? People say, oh, the, jeans, know, they're probably just waiting for PoE 2. And, um, Bit of knee action going on there. That's what you get. Big PoE 1 or leagues and stuff. That's what I you think get. it's going to be a big one. Uh, and as always, they're trying to reinvent the ARPG genre to some extent. It's going to be real. I When I got the email saying, hey, do you want to do a sponsored stream? I was like, yeah, cool. I like Path of Exile. It's a good game. I believe I believe there are a couple of video games that when you buy a new PC, it is totally worth it to spend the time installing those onto your PC. Path of Exile is one of them. Guild Wars 2, Factorio, Portal. You know, these are games that it's useful to have installed on a PC. They're games that are absolutely worth the hard drive space on a PC. And if someone were to give me a new PC and be like, hey, th do these games come pre-installed? I'd be like, all right, yeah, I totally get it. That's an understandable game to have installed. Uh, everyone has one of those. 
So I get about 10 emails a week from people wanting me to do either sponsored streams or putting sponsored segments in the videos. They're like, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? And I turn down pretty much all of them. So when I took this one, it's because I genuinely think The Path of Exile is a game that is worth installing and playing and having on your PC. It is a good experience. I don't agree with every decision they make, but I can agree with the majority and think it's worth it. So as soon as everyone just immediately comments, oh, sell out. Exactly. I turned down like 99% yeah, like of sponsored stuff, out there right now. How can which we is why I think it's game? important and, uh, that a lot of the time it, it's integrity. You know, it, You've got to keep your integrity. Feels like You've very much got to keep your integrity. This is a game that I can stand behind. You've changed. I had. I took that money and bought myself a nicer um, waistcoat. This one, I think that type of Don't forget to hydrate. I've got a cup of tea. Who knows? Innovation right next is to me. their strong suit. I'm definitely here for that one, but that's the one route they could go. Just accept them all thoughts of a different route they could go maybe sure yeah fix i love listening to you but the announcer exocon and the noise in the monitor is giving me cognitive dissonance i'll turn them down when i start talking oh copium gg <laughs> <laughs> has been stalling harder in poe one than we have on this keynote so <laughs> uh, yeah no i'm just hoping for big bosses and a big wrap up to the story again the thing we're seeing behind us you know it is a little bit of a Possibly an ascended Xana like Probably more creature. energy drink in a cup. No, this is actually. I know how that works out lore wise. When am I acting in The Witcher? Soon as Netflix give me that call back. Soon as Netflix call me back, I'll sort it out, don't you worry. But we're, we're putting pressure on them. We're putting some pressure there. PoE 1 League? Yeah. So, I mean, just like Rai said earlier, blow it all up. <laughs> blow it up. Just blow it all up. It always works because what, what's, what's left in the, you know, in the ashes? We'll see about that. Uh, or a boat league. <laughs> just, I mean, that's always the other option, right? Yep. There's yeah, always boat a boat and league. And or fishing league. Yeah. I mean, we've had gardening. Surely we can have fishing, actually, at some point. And as the, as the like, final, just like a meme send-off for PoE 1. Yeah. I think Crystal curses the garden. As soon as they put fishing in the game, it's officially an MMORPG. That's the moment that we're waiting for. Fishing, MMO. That's the connection. I like how their um, their idea for the end of it was just blow up the entire world. All right, cool, sweet, let's do it. You guys are finished, you know. Once the once the story is finished, blow everything up. Fantastic. Propelled forwards into the future and maybe exploring new lands. So it basically is a whole new world in one sense. So Very some sort of send off. I would love even even if it's just a little a little thing, just some little send off incorporated into the league or into the game, or maybe they're uh, if they're doing some sort of like update to the end game, something like that, you can cou couple that with like something a little bit of a teaser. This is just going to be me eating popcorn for like an hour and a half. I, I'm. I just want to point out. I was aware when I did that that I kind of. I used my hand to put the popcorn into my face, but then my fingers lingered a little bit too long. I'm going to play on that throughout the stream. I'm going to see who's watching, who catches that. What's happening with the end game? This is the stream they wanted forwards for us. You guys have any thoughts on that? Mm. I mean, not really. Like, how much bigger can you go? It's I know, right? Popcorn like, we're already cosmic. Like, you start out on the beach and you got a driftwood club, right? <laughs> and then you're slaying the cosmic entities from... Well, that, that's what I think is rather interesting, is that uh, we have Path of Exile 1 I, uh, got really big, maybe too big, mm -hmm. killing all the gods. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, that's, that's like the, the, the storytelling thing is like, you get to that point and it's like, Okay, you got to kind of pull it back a little bit. And it looks like we might be going a little bit more humble. A little bit. And now I keep an eye on the viewer count to see if it goes down or up. I think so. I think so. so and uh, I'm not sure how it would know to go up. As <laughs> if someone sat on Twitch just, and immediately they just sense there's an Englishman eating popcorn with too many fingers. Must find it. Contrasting that maybe with the end game being a different thing. Going down, totally understand it. Going up, someone is looking for a very specific fetish. And I'm here for you. Hot tub stream when? As soon as I get a hot tub, dude. With some weird wacky stuff when you start to think about which exiles were where and which exiles we're playing now and which exiles we're playing before and how they incorporated the story. It's kind of like a wild system that is uh, difficult to explain to non PoE players, perhaps. I, I can mean, fully expect even two PoE players, it's difficult to explain. <laughs> yes. yeah. Can I eat popcorn? I can fully expect one the finger? new world and everything. Just, oh, well, if they kind of close it off in a way with a big bang, maybe it's like kind of a reset and then we keep going further and further i'm kind of hoping for that because you were speaking very confidently about the beta and maybe no new world maybe we're gonna 
do an invasion on the world of wherever Maven's from and all that. I would love to see that big, big, mighty boss battles. I think PoE has been doing really well with yeah. that. And they're ramping it up every time. So the more of that, the better. Because it used to be a little bit disjointed, too. You know, back <laughs> in the day, the it was like... Now the pinky finger. Uh, I feel like I'm taking very weird requests. You could not, but yeah, I think bossing has been getting better and better. And those, like, spectacular moments of those big boss fights... <laughs> this is the beach episode of this stream. That's what this is. Okay, this is the fan service episode. The rest of it is the plot. This is filler. I know that. We know that. Let's just go together with it. Have a good time. Move the... Move the camera around, listen to what they're saying, have a good time. If you haven't got Path of Exile installed, it's definitely worth playing. You know, whenever I say anything good about a game, I get a load of people messaging me going, Sell out, shill, you just hate everything. I'm like, no, no, it's possible to like a game and enjoy it. That's the whole sentence. It is possible to enjoy something. It's rare, don't get me wrong, but it's possible. Eat it with your pinky and stare into the camera while doing it. Okay, I feel like I'm... I'm pretty much just supplying Golden Hawk with fetish stuff here, but we've got some time to kill. I'm sorry, do you need feeding now as well? Any, uh, we're, we're almost up to wrap up time and moving over to the main stage, but any Emergency final thoughts catfish. that you guys want to throw in? Uh, anything you hope to see or anything like that? We have two minutes, Noogie. You turn to me? Yo, uh, man, final I thoughts? I just, I just want to see passion. Yeah. I just, I just want to, I just want to see passion and just people just giving us everything and they've been daddy's building. Gotta go to it's, work. I, I predictions. I really, at this point, I just, I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, hard, maybe right. an MTX. I would like to see a Toucan. No. Yep. You know? A Toucan. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> <That's too. laughs> Gonna be real <laughs> impressed. I'd to buy this popcorn. I would just love to see a nervous Chris Wilson up on stage. Yes. Like yeah. for as much nerves as I'm having right now, like doing this sort of thing and waiting for the reveal. It, it's you know it pales in comparison to getting on stage and revealing everything for the past few years. And your wife said I should narrate audiobooks. Here's the thing: I got loads of people messaging me saying you should narrate this, you should narrate that, you should do this, you should do that. I would love to, but getting in contact with the people that give you those jobs is basically impossible. It's you can't just walk up to them and be like, "Hey, I've got a voice. Want me to read stuff?" It turns out that all of the audiobooks are narrated by a very small number of narrators who are all working with very big agencies. I would absolutely love to do shows. I would love to do audiobooks. I would love to do radio dramas. I would love to do all the things that people say they want to see me in. But unfortunately, getting in contact with the people that have the authority to actually give me those roles, really difficult. Also, whenever they hear YouTuber, they immediately discount you straight away. Cast, I'm Ziggy D with Mathel, Rise, and Noogie. We will sprint back over here just after the keynote is finished. There is not much time left, so we'll see you fine folks over there in just a moment. Thank you very much. D4 bad. <laughs> Did someone just add in D4 bad at the very end? That wasn't me. I didn't say that. People, people, people. I wonder if there's anyone in that crowd right now watching this stream. There's nobody to know. I mean, they shouldn't be. They should be watching what's directly in front of them. But I wonder if there is. There's a cosplayer. There we go. Got some cool cosplayers going on. Loving it. I wonder if there is. I want to find one person that's... I'm waving, says Napa. I want to find one person in that crowd that's currently in this stream as well. Beautiful. <laughs> Someone just said, yell, go, Josh. Don't do that. That would be, it would just disrupt the whole thing. Don't get me wrong, I'd be, I'd be very proud of you. I'd be very proud. There's one for sure, there's one person. There's just, someone said close your shirt and lose my only advantage. I think not. Close your, look, I understand that I've got a very specific audience. I respect the guy wearing the Mike Wazowski hat because it is bloody warm in convention halls and centers like that, and they have absolutely committed to that look. That's very respectable. But you said close the shirt. Look, I know my audience. I know most of you want more buttons open. I understand that. But we have to remain a professional. You know, there's a level of integrity to go on there. There's a level of integrity. I'm trying to look on all those screens and spot what's on any of them as if anyone in this stream is going to be able to work out. 
Let's see who's the most excited. Who's the most excited in this crowd? That guy's got googly eyes on his hat. I appreciate that. That's good. That's very impressive. Did someone... Hang on. Did someone... Here we go. Hey guys, how's it going? Perry in here. And welcome to ExileCon! Thank you all so much for joining us here in New Zealand. It's quite a journey. Thank you guys for joining us online. It's going to be a fantastic show. You're welcome. Um, I wasn't doing anything else. So uh, you guys want to learn about what's coming up in Path of Exile? Yeah. I can do that. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, before we get to the people that are best to deliver that information, before we get into Path of Exile's wonderful future, let's take a moment to go over all the wonderful things we have already experienced in Path of Exile. Drop some popcorn. Let's take a moment to check out Path of Exile from the past. Past of Exile. I like it. Background life, life was crazy. good. A worthy opponent. Go with God. That's the send. The touch of God. Bow to your queen, mortal. You there. Let me bend your hair for a moment. Why are you so in love with death? Anyone remember 2016? Good times. The before times, I believe, is what we call them now. Twenty seventeen, last of the good years. Is it just me or did did twenty twenty last like five years? I swear between twenty twenty and twenty twenty two, like seven years passed. sword. That was nice. This is like the opposite of a pre-rendered trailer. This is just, hey, here's a load of gameplay from years before. Alright, cool. Just, just do this again. Do I need to react harder? This one should be rather... Am I not reacting hard enough? Does the toy wish to play with me? I don't know why. I assume reaction is just like pressure coming out of the screen. Toward a cliff. Detonations incoming! Yeah, looks all right. React less. There's no time. I've become too weak to sustain the blood crucible. That's just been the most boring reaction ever. I'm gonna eat popcorn just sensually. That's what I'm gonna do. Do you want more food? What do you wish for? You do want more food. Good God. Just someone ask Exile come to chill for a second. I'm just feeding the cat. Oh, so this is part of Exile too.
That's an impressive amount of enemies on screen. I made a video a few days ago saying that I don't appreciate when... Oh, okay. I don't appreciate when games use pre-rendered trailers to try and advertise what they are because it's not actually representative of the game content. I appreciate the fact that they've advertised PoE 2 by just showing you the game. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. There he is. Welcome to Exocon 2023. It feels like just yesterday that I was here on stage at Exocon 2019 announcing Path of Exile 2. <laughs> Since then, we have worked tirelessly on the content we're going to show you this weekend. To everyone here in person, thank you so much for coming out to join us. It honestly feels so good to know that people love Path of Exile so much that they fly across the world to come and celebrate it with us in person. He has 14 defense. Make the most of your time in New Zealand. Our last Exocon was a magical experience, and we've tried to go above and beyond in every way this time. If you're tuning in online to watch the live stream, thanks for joining us also. I wish you could all be with us here, but to ensure you have the full Exocon experience, we have made sure to include every talk and session as part of the two-day live stream this weekend. Not a problem, Chris. I've got you covered. You'll also receive the attendee-only Exocon 2023 hideout. We have so much to share with you this weekend, and let's just get right into Path of Exile 2. I'd like to introduce Jonathan Rogers and Mark Roberts, game directors of Path of Exile 2. <laughs> Damn, in the chat was like, what the hell, Josh? All right, listen. <laughs> this stream is going to be an interesting, awkward combination of them presenting and me being a little bit suggestive have been hard at work on PoE 2. And honestly, the project has become much bigger than we expected when we announced it in 2019. It's been almost four years since then, and so it's about time we showed you what we've been working on. Oh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, okay. that's all you get. When we, PoE 2's scope has continued to grow and grow, and it's far more than just an expansion with a new campaign. It has entirely new monsters, skills, mechanics, classes, everything you'd expect from the next generation of action RPGs. Not to mention revamps of most of the POE 1 League content. This thing is just freaking huge. There was a point where we realized that our plan to replace POE 1 with POE 2 would essentially be getting rid of a game that people love for no real reason. So we made a decision. Path of Exile 1 and 2 will be separate with their own mechanics, balance, end games, and leagues. But it's still a shared platform. Your microtransactions are available across both games. Everything you have ever purchased or will ever purchase in the future will be usable in both games unless it's hyper-specific to the content of one of them. You can't transform into a bear in PoE 1, so a reskin of your bear form isn't going to work. But you absolutely can equip the awesome armor set that you got and use all your stash tabs. So with that in mind, we'd love to show you a live demo of some of the stuff we've been working on. PoE 2 has come a long way. Okay, so splitting into game 1 and game 2, going to be issues with that. But the fact that microtransactions travel across both games, that's decent. They could have sold you twice. Hey, yeah, come here. How's it going, man? Welcome back. Now let's see if it works. The gods caused all this, you know. After Oriath was destroyed, I traveled, searching for answers. Everywhere I went, the same divine devastation. It must end. I will end it, and no exile will stop me. I'm immediately on her side. I can fix it. Give me time. Oh, if that bear finds a vampire, my god. Two games have got it. Reactive boss arenas? Alright, I'm up for that.
Okay. Very nice water graphics. God. <sighs> okay, so many skills. Six person co op. All right, <laughs> boys, let's get a group this going. I'm gonna mess with some people right reborn, now. No matter the cost. I should call her. All right, fair enough. They actually show gameplay, not just a pre-rendered trailer. I like that. That's decent. I know it's pre-rendered gameplay, but you get the idea. It is actual in-game stuff. All right, Mark. Your turn now. <laughs> Welcome to Path of Exile 2. We'd like to start off by showing you some of the gameplay of Act 3, one of the six acts in Pee 2's campaign. We're starting here in the jungle depths. Act 3 is set in the ruins of the Vile Civilization, which fell thousands of years ago. Jungle has taken over their former once great cities, and we'll be exploring it us using one of the six new character classes called the Monk. In Peewee 1, we had one character class for each of the combinations of strength, dexterity, and intelligence. When looking at the design of Peewee 2, though, we realized that many of the new skills that we were trying to design just didn't really fit thematically with the existing classes that we have. Being a spellcaster with a bear form makes sense for strength int, but it just doesn't really sound like something a Templar would do. We realized that since we had new mechanics for every attribute combination, it actually made sense to design a new character class to avoid the, to explore the new themes. In PoE 2, every attribute combination has two classes associated with it. Strength Int has the Templar or the Druid. On Dexterity, you have the Ranger or the more spear-focused Huntress. And on Dex Int, you have the Shadow and the Monk, which Mark is playing here. Each class has its own three ascendancies that let you further specialize the class in a way that only that class has access to but they both start at the same location on the passive tree. The quest rewards you are offered on the two variants are tailored to the class, but of course, this is POE. You can still mix and match anything to your heart's content. It is nerve-wracking as hell to play a game in front of a live audience, and I guarantee the guy that's playing right now is probably an absolute master at this game, and all he's thinking is, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up. Looks like we've come across the boss for this area. In POE 2, every area of the campaign contains a boss of at least this difficulty. That's over 100 bosses to fight as you make your way through the campaign, and they all have unique mechanics. Some of you are mentioning that you've seen a gold drop in the game, which means there may be an economy in the As game. As you've been watching from Mark fighting watch. here, you probably noticed that melee combat in PoE 2 is a very different feel than before. We've done a lot of things to add mobility to combat. Practically every melee skill in PoE 2 has some kind of movement built into it. But the monk in particular is a melee fighter who specializes in mobility over brute strength. If there are coin drops, keep an eye out for that. So, as Mark has been playing, you might have noticed these blue markers over enemies. Mark has a skill equipped called Killing Palm. 19 gold. Whenever an enemy has a blue indicator over it, it means that the monster has low enough life to cull with Killing Palm. Gold, gold, gold. Okay. Successfully executing the cull will give you a power charge. This is an important skill for the monk, since many of his skills interact with power charges. One of the great things about this skill is that it has a built-in dash forward, which makes it much... Does that mean there's going to be an economy with items and stuff that you can buy or fix? Let's see if they address that, and if they don't, I'll ask. I understand that a lot of people are always very nervous that I'm just going to try and big up whatever company I happen to be working with at the same time, but my focus is on being honest with you guys and getting you guys the best game. And companies want to work with me so I can hold them accountable to bring you the best game. If you want to charge right in, Whirling Assault is great. It doesn't do much damage per hit, but it covers a lot of ground. We all win if we have good games. If Generally I big up speaking, a crap game you to you, of your my POE reputation too. goes down immediately. If you make a turn at the right time, you can get a couple of extra hits on the monsters, getting them in range of your cull. 
Follow up with a killing palm and then finish off the rest of the pack with your falling thunder. Uh, some of you want to see the health bars go down and stuff, so... We've I'll now put entered the Vile Mechanaria. There. This is the place where the Vile built the various constructs you that they relied on to power their civilization. The health and stuff. Now this is a find. A Vile ruin that hasn't been looted? I wonder why nobody's been in here before. One useful feature we've added is the ability to call in NPCs to where you are to give you more information or help you with quest objectives, rather than always having to go back to town. In this case, we've called in Alva to find out what to do. This mechanism... If powered with a small soul core, it could open that door. There should definitely be soul cores somewhere. I'm watching the it. chat of the official stream as well, and everything is just like gold, 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 gold where, gold when, gold why. We need to find a small soul core to open this door. Let's explore. Do you wish to leave the room now? The if you want to shave off some lights without getting too close to some of the more dangerous monsters, a great option is Wind Blast. Wind Blast also doesn't do too much damage, but it keeps enemies back. The closer they are, the farther they're pushed back, so it's a great option for keeping smaller but higher damage enemies at bay. Note that the bigger the enemy is, the less they'll be pushed back, so trying to push back some right, giants isn't going to be as guys. effective. Okay, Monk seems pretty cool. Slapping things with a, with a stick, always good. Consider me impressed. I'll keep investigating in here. Bring him to find anything else. Bit of spin to win. Now, if you need to defeat tougher enemies, it might be time to break out some of the ice skills in the monk's arsenal. Glacial Cascade creates a wave of ice that moves slowly in front of the player. It's pretty ineffective against fast-moving monsters because most of the damage occurs right at the end of the wave, and so a lot of monsters will just walk right by it. But if you can find a way to make a monster stop at just the right place, it can be very effective. In order to do that, you're probably going to want to freeze some monsters. The monk has a few different tools to do this. A fairly, option, a fairly simple option is to get right in the monster's face with Ice Strike. Ice Strike doesn't do too much damage at the first two hits, but attack three times in sequence and you can get off a combo that has a much higher chance to freeze. Get in there with the freeze. I get a load of people say to me, wouldn't it be cool if we had an AoE attack that did more damage at the edge of the AoE? And I'm like, yeah, if you can make it work, that could work. Does a devastating amount of damage. This is a really great combo against bosses, as you'll see later. Oh yeah, and I've just been casually mentioning rolling around. Did I forget to mention that in POE 2 we added a dodge roll to every character? Just press spacebar at any time to roll. There's... <laughs> dodge roll, there's, I'll take There's that. no cooldown and no limitations. <laughs> oh, no cooldown dodge roll. Dark Souls and it build is go. in it so you don't get stuck on anything. When you... <laughs> <laughs> When you dodge roll, you're not invulnerable. If something hits you, you're going to feel it. But most things aren't going to hit you. And that's because while you're rolling, projectiles and melee strikes will always miss. You'll have to roll out of the way of a slam that has AoE, but anyone swinging a sword or throwing a fireball is going to miss. Now, another important function of dodge roll is it lets you cancel... Okay, so dodge roll gives you iframes against melee attacks and projectiles, but not AoE of the area that you're in. So you can't time an exact iframe when the damage would be done. AoEs will still hit you pack and cast times play and makes dodge roll a very reliable feeling way to avoid attacks so it's path of elden so much. that's one way to get out of the way of damage but the monk specializes in mobility so it makes sense that it would have some more wave of frost is one of our new attacks with a retreat built right in you move backwards and throw out a cold attack with a significant freeze a great thing about this is that it puts you at a good distance to follow up with a glacial cast launch your action ultima online i've never played ultima online but it is on my list to get around to I don't want this guy to die in the demo, but it would be funny. It would be funny. He came close. I'll tell you what, this uh, whole reacting to other people doing stuff, it's very easy. I get why everyone does it. This might be the start of my reaction arc. Another skill you can use to get some extra freeze is Shattering Palm. Shattering Palm is a palm strike that puts a small ice bomb on the target. Kill or deal enough damage to the target and the bomb will explode, doing some damage and a significant freeze. It's a great option against bosses where the wave of ice might not be enough to get that freeze off. But you, really want to get, uh, but you still really want to use Glacial Cascade to get the damage bonus. Every single person in the main chat is just spamming the word gold. They are going to have to acknowledge that. 
The final That's skill we're going to show you today is Flicker Strike. It's a monk skill and another skill that consumes power charges. If you've played Peer We Won before, you know what to expect. Is this pre recorded? No, it's a great guy finish of a tough boss fight if you were able to get some power charges beforehand. Which is impressive. I'll, I'll respect that. Playing live, gotta respect it. It's hard to do. Oh, he means is this pre recorded? No, no, this is live. I can read all the chat. I just don't want to talk over the game too much because I know you guys are enjoying watching it. Thank you for covering this, new to your YouTube channel. Thank you very much. I meant the event. Oh, right, sorry, yeah. The event is live right now. There are other YouTubers and Twitch people reacting to this as well. Here we have Blackjaw, former overseer of the Mechanarium. When the Val fell, he was turned to stone and now guards the area. Oh, dude just dodged. All right, so dodge rolls are going to be my thing this boss, in this. We're going to need all the tools on the Monk's Arsenal, especially the combo of, of Freeze and Glacial Cascade. Now, if you're a Peewee 1 player, you might think you can't rely on Freeze because there's so many bosses that are immune to it. But in Peewee 2, that's changing significantly. In Peewee 1, Freeze is a binary mechanic. An attack freezes the target, or it doesn't. What this basically means is that in Peewee 1, we were forced to add Freeze immunity to many bosses because Freeze just trivialized them. Because of that, Freezing was something you could only really rely on while pack clearing, and not something you could use as a core part of your build for boss fighting. In Peewee 2, though, all crowd control mechanics now have internal meters that allow you to build up to a freeze. Brilliant, so it builds up instead of just being instantly on or off. I like that. That's like the poison mechanic in Elden Ring or Dark Souls. More than those games. When you freeze an enemy, it increases the amount of freeze you need to do to get another freeze. But the increased difficulty bleeds away slowly. More freeze will always let you freeze the boss more often, but this system means that you will not get out, it will not get out of control in party play or interact. Right, so you can't constantly spam freeze and chain freeze the boss because it gets harder to freeze them after every freeze. That's a nice balancing mechanic, I'll give it that. So far, my only real question is, what is gold? I like how there's a big badass boss, and then there's just dude with a <laughs> stick. Oh, oh damn, okay. It's got some projectiles going on there. So how is gold? Yeah, everyone always asks what is gold, but never how is gold. Heard about gold in different games, used to pay for stuff. Like, I know what gold is, I just want to know what gold is, you know? Stop. <laughs> Dude! Oh. No! Oh. What? I was invested. What? <laughs> oh, no! The problem is now, if he returns to town, it's going to show right. you town. Let's, uh, which I don't think they want to show you take yet. Take two. <laughs> All right, so this might be a good time to mention that uh, in POE 2, if you die to the boss, you have to start again from the start. There's no boss cheesing. <laughs> so, All right, on. okay. Might be it. So you... bosses don't maintain health. You can't just keep running in constantly with minions like I did. That's going to be a problem. It's just typing some cheats to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Tilled god mode. All right, we're good. <sighs> Back I to swear the, to God, if he just gives stream. himself unlimited health and, like, the best weapons and armor. All right. All right. Round two. <laughs> Let's go. Whoever balanced that, like, come on. It's live theater, guys. <laughs> this is what happens. Remember, if you die in Path of Exile 2, you die in real life. So be careful. Dude, this is a really long boss fight. <laughs> Why did they choose this as the one to show on stream? Why were they like, hey, let's let's make you fight the boss that has really powerful attacks and an absolute ton of health. Now, I do like Path of Exile. Like I said earlier, I think there are a couple of video games that it's worth having installed on your PC. Like, whenever I get a new PC, if I ever have to get one, one of the first things I always do is I put Morrowind on it, I put Roller Coaster Tycoon on it, I put Portal on it, I put Guild Wars 2 on it, and I put Path of Exile on it. 
not because I play all of them all the time, but because sometimes I'm in the mood and I just like think, hey, I'm just going to have a quick half-hour blitz, quick hour blitz on something that I want to play. And it's one of those very easy log in, enjoy for half an hour, enjoy for an hour, do something else kind of games. Which rollercoaster tycoon? Rollercoaster tycoon one, personally. I prefer once for one really weird, minute reason. In rollercoaster tycoon one, you can set both the entrance to the park cost and the per ride cost but in two you can either do entrance to the park or ride and i don't like the fact you have to choose between them i like being able to do both <laughs> this guy um this cool. boss doesn't seem that easy i respect the fact that they've chosen to put him in the demo but same with like doom yeah doom or um factoria it's one of those things where people will look at any game I play and go, oh, you're just... Someone even said to me once, oh, you're just playing that oh, game because you like it. Yes. What other reason is there to play a game? Okay, okay. Do the... Am I going to play it because I hate it? Am I going to play it because I'm just, you know, massively invested and I've got some cost whoa, whoa, fallacy whoa. into it? I play a game because I like it. He is running out of potions. He's used an entire potion in slot two. He's got one and three left. Three is going down, and he's got a tiny amount of shield. He doesn't seem to be burning through mana very quickly, though. Uh, mana is refilling faster than he's able to use it, which means possibly missing out on DPS, depending on how fast his builders or spenders work. I don't think he's got almost... I haven't yet seen him run out even halfway of mana. If I move the little subscriber box, you guys will see what I'm on about. So I've not seen his... I've not seen the mana or the energy go down below halfway, which means he's either relying on auto attacks a hell of a lot, or he hasn't got any kind of dump mana spell, anything that just takes an absolute ton. I know it's not designed to go to zero, but the fact that it's not even gone below halfway... Yeah. And the boss is cool, and it's very impressive what he's doing. I like hearing the contract they sent me, they were like, don't swear. Oh, oh. Come on, come on. <laughs> no. get, get One up. rule for me, another yeah, for so thee, is it? Grinding gear after games. No, 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 no. I swear to God, mate, if you okay. die. All right. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right, well done, too. All right. Fuck off. Okay. <laughs> Game of words. <laughs> that man All is right. sweating. Second time's the charm. <laughs> So, <laughs> Black Drawer has dropped a consumable quest item here called the Flame Core. It's a permanent plus 10 to spirit. In Pair We 2, we really want to make sure that you will feel rewarded for exploration. It wouldn't be much good if we made all these awesome optional bosses if we didn't have something great to find for killing them. One of the things you might find for killing a boss is permanent stat bonuses for your character. I wonder what spirit does. Hmm. If he dies to like a basic mob now. All right, now, because this random uh, area is different, Mark will have to find his way to the exit the hard way. This is, uh, <laughs> because I died, this is yep. no longer rehearsed at all. You, it's brave to play live. Improv on stage is difficult. Improving around a game that's not yet released and just hoping that you find the exit in time when you've got an audience, that's a risk. I mean, when I go on stage, I want to make sure that every element that I have control over is controlled. You need a level of, you know, improv, because that's fun for the audience, but... I... Does anyone else get that? Do you feel nervous? Are you watching him now, like, hoping he can keep the presentation going on? I mean, they, they believe in their product, I'll give them that. So far, we've not had any pre-rendered cutscenes, which is nice. They very much believe that it's a game that's going to hold people's attention. And, hey, it seems to be. Apart from that bit, which looks more tough. <laughs> Same thing happened when we went to the Baldur's Gate 3 thing. Um, they, they just played it live oh, okay. for us and let us watch for, like, two hours, which was great. Uh, now he's yeah, using more men. Josh, I never find you streaming. I'm so happy. Chaos, welcome. Need to use those uh, killing palms more often, Mark. <laughs> we are currently watching ExileCon. This is footage from Path of Exile 2, which looks rather impressive so far. 
We have questions. What is gold? How is gold? Who is gold? When is gold? Waiting for the collective audience when they pop open the skill tree. Oh, okay, so lots of rats. So the skill tree is an interesting one with Pipe of Exile because I actually questioned Chris Wilson when I spoke to him and I said, look, that skill tree is a quick moment for so many people. So many people I know, including myself, opened the skill tree for the first time and just went, nope, because it was just so much information in one go. Has that you know, bit of consideration in rework? I think you got completely lost it, there. presenting it. And no he said, and I respect him for this, he said, no, because the kind of player that we're after and the kind of player that we're going to keep is the kind of player that looks right. at that skill tree yeah. and goes, go. oh All my right, here god, we are. Here we are. Yes. Here's the <laughs> And I've got to respect that approach, because if you make a product that appeals to everyone, it actually appeals to no one. If you take a consensus and try and do something a little bit that you like, a little bit that you like, a little bit that you like, you end up with an absolute generic right. mess, which no Straight one plays, through. because even though it does a little bit right. of everything, it's not perfect for anyone. <laughs> When part of Exile oh, made their skill tree, they said, look, this is going to put a lot of people uh, off, in order to help with the next area, we're going to call it's perfect for who I'd like to welcome Octavian to the stage, who's going to join the party with Mark, so we can play through together. All right, co-op. Co-op is my thing. I like co-op. I was actually thinking earlier about playing Time Splitters 2, right, local second. co-op, with a few friends. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. My stubble the sorceress real. is the it new is, but for some reason, the green character. Screen thinks it's green. While the witch focuses more on occult magic and summoning, the sorceress is themed around pure elemental destruction. Will this be free? Yes. Let's have a look at how she plays. Uh, Path of Exile 1 and I believe Path of Exile 2 are both free games, but with microtransactions within them for bank space, stash tabs, and cosmetics. I don't the believe there's viable power. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be with there. This, I hope it isn't. If it ever is, I will definitely but change my opinions. It isn't charged. I don't like viable power in games. There is still latent energy in this machinarium from its ancient operation. Cosmetics, I can get behind. These lines power? in the stonework no. should lead to generators. We have some skills here you're probably going to recognize if you've played Pee-wee one before, but they feel a bit different now. Spark is great in these tight passages since it bounces around. We've added a pierce support gem to really allow it to hit an entire room full of targets. For a more single target focus skill, Arc is a great choice. It does much more damage than the first target that you hit. That is some nice lighting. It hits all enemies around you and slows them down with a chill. Just be careful. Getting up close and personal isn't the ideal place for a sorceress to be. She doesn't have the more the defenses of a more melee-oriented character. In order to help with that, though, we produce Arctic Armor. In PoE 2, Arctic Armor is a buff that builds up as you stand still. You can see the ice crystals forming around the character. They drop off if you walk. When monsters hit you, they take cold damage and build up to a freeze. So it's a great defense. Just be careful. You have to be standing still for a little while to get the full effect, so trying to stutter step using it isn't the best strategy. Now, Arctic Armor is an ongoing... Gonna have to say that maybe standing still in Path of Exile is not the greatest of plans. Power to you if you want to try it, but personally, if they've added a role, standing still is, like, pretty low down on my, uh, my list of strategies to not die. ...you can use for ongoing effects like Arctic Armor, Heralds, Auras, and Minions. Arctic armor basically just seems to be tomb. Cold coffin. Costs a lot of mana and has a really long cast time, but it's worth the wait. It does a devastating amount of damage. To help you out of danger, your character moves back slightly as it casts. It's pretty hard to hit fast-moving opponents, but it's great on tougher enemies that stand still, or even a larger pack if you're further away and can predict where they're going to move. Okay, so... Now, if you run out of mana casting too many of those, <laughs> I guess in an emergency you can use ice your free to cast fireball. So where did that come from, you ask? Well, this is a great opportunity to explain the way that we've changed caster weapons in PoE 2. Now in PoE 1, caster weapons had a default melee attack that nobody used. Gold. And because they had that, they also had a bunch of attack mods that would spawn on them that were useless to a caster. In PoE 2, we wanted to clean that up. So each staff now comes with a built-in free to cast spell. Yes. <laughs> Each staff has a spell. That works for casters. Now, this particular staff is the base type that you'll get right on the starting beach, so it's quite likely that you'll have outgrown it by now. So that's why we've also um, made a lot of staves with more utility-focused powers for casters to use. Here we have a crystal staff. It has a pretty cool built-in spell called Unleash. 
Using it slams your staff on the ground and will allow you to triple cast whatever you cast with your next spell. Now, of course, what you're probably going to want to use with that is something powerful, and Comet is a great option. You can become a Gatling gun by just slamming your own staff in the ground and then being a passive turret. We really try to avoid using cooldowns because we really hate the feeling that combat is just waiting to cast your next spell. But it does make sense for Unleash since it's free to cast and it's something we want you to use situationally anyway. Now, if you're facing something tough, you might need to try out Mana Tempest. Mana Tempest creates a circle of power which your character literally hovers over the ground. While in the circle, your mana drains, but it powers up all your spells. Lightning projectiles will fork, beams will chain further, and you also do a lot more damage. Okay. That's a nice choice. Um, give yourself a, an AoE damage boost, but also drains mana. Yeah, risk reward. So, with all of these skills, here's a great combo to try. First, cast Frost Bomb to reduce the target's cold resistance. Then use Mana Tempest to increase your damage. Follow up with Unleash and then triple cast Comet to do a truly insane amount of damage. One thing that I do appreciate about Path of Exile, both one and two, is the fact that so many effects stack together. So if you reduce something's hold resistance and then hold it and then increase your own damage and then do something else. I was impressed when I got fireball and then triple fire and then homing and I put them all on the same thing and it fired three fireballs, which then homed in. I'm like, yeah, I appreciate the fact you can stack things. And that's a great opportunity to talk about how skill gems drop in PoE 2. Instead of dropping specific gems, you can find uncut gems. Just right click on them and pick whatever skill you want. Nor the, uh, whoops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, yeah. 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 Skill gems. Uh, the, gem, the gem will come pre-leveled to the level of the area that dropped it, so it's a lot easier to change between skills in PoE 2. This time, I think it might be cool to grab one of our meta gems. Meta gems are skills that can have other skills socketed into them, changing how they work. In this case, we're going to select Cast on Shock. Now, let's equip this thing on the skill screen and choose which spell to trigger with it. I think Comet might be fun. <laughs> now, because Cast on Shock reserves Spirit, we'll need to first disable our Arctic Armor. We have to decide if we'd rather have the extra defense or the extra offense of the Cast on Shock using our Spark. In PoE 2, Trigger Gems use a system of filling up cast time on each trigger. Basically, if a skill has a short cast time, it will trigger really often. And if it has a long cast time, like this Comet here, it will take a lot longer to trigger. You can see on the top left corner that there's a counter that shows you how long until the next trigger. Hopefully you shot some monsters. <laughs> there we go. And there you have it. That's using cast on shot. We've automatically cast... Okay, so you're effectively setting up your own... It's not like a macro, but it's setting up a thing that's going to happen when you have hit certain targets of damage type or elemental type or done this. So it makes setting builds even more complicated, like a combo that the game is tracking for you. Pre-built combos, if you will. As power is restored to the Mechanarium, all the constructs are coming back to life. We need to fight, fight them on the way back to the charged soul core. So, one thing that PoE 1 players might have noticed is this character has both lightning spells and cold spells. That's pretty inefficient, I did right? Notice that, yes. It's a big no no for most builds because any specialization into cold or lightning isn't going to affect the other element. Mm. And generic elemental damage increases are not going to be as powerful as focusing on a single element. Well, in PoE 2, we have another major new system to introduce to solve these kinds of problems. And it starts, oddly enough, with Weapon Swap. Now, in PoE 1, Weapon Swap isn't really used much for its originally intended purpose. We imagine that people are going to be swapping in and out between different weapons <coughs> to deal with whatever situation they were in. People just don't do that at all. And a large reason for that is because it's really, really awkward. In PoE 2, we wanted to uh, solve all of that. The staff Octavian is using here has an ice mod on it that makes it great for when he's using his ice spells. But we would also like to be able to make sure that this build works just as well for his lightning spells. If Octavian equips his previous staff in his second weapon set, you can see that it appears on the character's back. Now, we're going to open up the skill screen. 
If Octavian opens the skill options for his lightning skills, you can see here that you can choose which weapon sets are usable with each skill. First, we uncheck set one from being used by his lightning skills. Then we go through the cold skills and turn those off with his lightning weapon. I'll just take a second. <laughs> if I can remember where they all are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when we use Spark, the character will automatically switch to the lightning staff on his back and then use the skill. And when Octavian uses his Ice Nova, his character automatically switches to his Ice Staff before using it. That's really good. So you don't even need to manually switch your weapons to use the spells to buff them. You just use the spell and the character's like, oh, this weapon's a good choice for that. I'm going to use that. Then I'll switch back and use this instead. You're basically always equipped with two weapons. But we still have a problem. Passives. Wouldn't it be nice if we could specialize in both cold and lightning passives on the character? Well, in POE 2, you can. Hopefully Mark can deal with those monsters while uh, we do this demo. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're on the passive skill screen here, and you can see that we are close to both a cold and there a lightning is. cluster. At the top right of the screen, you can see that we have some weapon set specific points to allocate. If Octavian holds shift, he can allocate set one to the cold passives, and then allocate set two to the lightning passives. Weapon-specific skill trees. <laughs> Check it out. As we use our weapon swap, the skills allocate changes from one build to the other automatically. So whenever we cast the appropriate spell, the character's passives reconfigure on the fly to the correct build for that spell. Now, you can't do this with every single passive on your tree. Only points granted from skill books will allow this kind of dual specialization. So you're not going to be changing from a mace slamming warrior into a fire elementalist with the press of a button. But it certainly increases the number of options you have for builds. There's a huge number of places where the system can shine. You can augment your dagger shadow build with traps, or have a great curse set up on your witch with one spec, and then move to your chaos debuff spells with the other, for example. It really opens up your options. Okay. Now, another fun meta gem to try out is called Barrier Invocation. This works a little bit like the trigger gems I talked about before, but this one charges up as your energy shield is hit by monsters. We're going to put an Ice Nova in this one. The more energy shield you lose, the more charge builds up. Let me just get that one equipped there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, the more energy shield you lose, the more charge will build up until the point you're able to cast the socketed skill instantly. You can see it on the top left building up again. There we go. So you, lose some, uh, yeah. so you lose some energy shield and at just the right time, invoke Ice Nova to cast all the stacked up copies in one instant cast. If you keep losing shield, oh, you'll stacks. build up even more charge for even more casts. So it's a great defensive option in an emergency. Got to admit, I have a real love for weird automaton style enemies, especially ones that have like spinning blades in them. You know in Elden Ring when you have those weird wheeling enemies with the huge big kind of side hands that spin around? I just <laughs> love enemy design like that. And here we are back at the charged soul core. All we have to do now is uh, take it. <laughs> just take it. <laughs> Over. What the? <laughs> okay, environment becoming boss. Don't die this time, guys. Yeah, the design I really like. <laughs> Frozen? Nice. Someone in the chat pointed out that this is a lot of stuff, and that is true. Path of Exile does do excess very well. I mean, some people say quality, some people say quantity, and quantity does have a quality all of its own, is an interesting way to look at it. Some people will look at Path of Exile and get overwhelmed. There's, there's no doubt about that. There's just so much stuff going on. The cool thing is, you don't, because I was playing Path of Exile one or you don't need to min-max everything to be effective and to be good. I played a, a really bad build and still got pretty far into the game. But for those of you who do want to min-max everything, this is going to be a mathematical nightmare to try and do. 
There are going to be so many forum arguments about the best one percent, best two percent, best skill, skill best percent. passive. <laughs> All skill. <laughs> this also does look like a really nice boss. Like graphically, I love the animation on the snakes. I like the fact that as well we're seeing the stab the staff into the ground to use the charge up and then do three meteor things. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the amount of build within the game is is massive. And some people will get intimidated by it. The best way the best way to play Path of Exile for fun is without a wiki. Just build some random crazy build and see if it works. Or play with like three or four mates, do some cool stuff, don't go for like end game. Triangle. Don't go for world class. Once you've got into it and then it's your you know, your favourite thing ever, oh. then oh. start talking to the birds. Because I think we all know as soon as you start reading the wikis and Shall reading we? the Reddit, especially nice. about any game, that's when you start hating it. I'll go in with no no idea. I just want to cast lots of light. So that's part of Exile 2. These areas as well as around half of each of the first four acts are available to play at the three demo zones around ExileCon. Now, if you're physically here at this event and you get to play the demo, just remember, it's a different game than before. It's a lot harder. You're probably gonna run the first pack of monsters and just die. <laughs> I really recommend you read the signs. They have good advice on how to combine your skills effectively. And remember, dodge rolls on spacebar, use it. <laughs> you're just gonna die otherwise. So your next question is likely to be, when is the beta? Well, we're in our last year of development but we're, and we're still finishing acts, adding skills and balancing everything. The closed beta is going to start on June 7th, 2024. <sighs> Path of Exile 2 has been a long time coming, and we're incredibly excited to be near the finish line, but we're just not quite there yet. We're determined not to rush this and make sure we get everything right. In the meantime, there's a lot in store for POE1. I'll hand back over to Chris, and he's going to talk about what's coming up. Chris, what does gold do? Thank you very much. Don't make me come down there and ask. Someone in the audience just yell, what does gold do? Don't do that. that was a joke, but if you if you do that, we would have an answer. So that demo was very hard for them to do in person. Like I am very impressed it went that well. So as Jonathan explained, Path of Exile 1 will continue to be its own unique game once Path of Exile 2 comes out. We will continue to update it with expansions and leagues going forward. And because accounts and microtransactions are shared between the two games, and their expansion releases are offset from each other, it's super easy to jump between them and effectively play both if you want. So I'm going off script for a second here and just going to explain this a bit better. Imagine we release a Path of Exile 2 expansion, right? So everyone dives in and plays it. You give it, say, out of the 13-week cycle, you're going to play for, you know, some hardcore players play for the first few weeks, some people play for most of the time. We're going to aim a Path of Exile 1 expansion to come out towards the end of that cycle, say four or five weeks from the end, which also lasts for three months. He's off so script, because boys. Path of Exile 2 has more content and He's is going a rogue. significantly larger game, it will mean that you can play Path of Exile 2 for the majority of the cycle and then either keep playing if you want to keep playing Path of Exile 2 or jump into Path of Exile 1 when its league launches and enjoy that either for the entire period or until the next Path of Exile 2 one comes out. And of course, because your purchases are shared, if you were to buy supporter packs or microtransactions in either, they're just available on your characters in the other. Yeah, they are still doing one as well. We've got one coming out in just three weeks on August 18th. Let's watch the trailer for Path of Exile, Trial of the Ancestors. Souls such as yours do not go quietly into the night. They thirst for battle. They yearn to prove themselves. Welcome to the Halls of the Dead. Earn your place among us. So this is the Under next expansion of the Path of Exile 1. Eye. Test your metal against the greatest warriors who ever lived. Prove yourself in the trial of the ancestor. There's a turtle. I'm on the turtle side.
Oh, it's like a PvP style battle arena thing. champion. I move my Will camera right at the end. Just so you couldn't read any of that. I did that on purpose. In the Karui afterlife, the fallen chieftains of each tribe participate in a tournament called the Trial of the Ancestors. You will journey to the afterlife, assemble your own team, and enter the tournament to battle those chieftains and earn valuable rewards. As you play through areas in the Ancestor Challenge League, you'll find tradable silver coins. Using them will take you to the Karui Afterlife, where you will encounter Navali, who you may remember from the Prophecy League. Each coin allows you to play a match of the tournament. You start the tournament with a basic team, consisting of three warriors. The tournament is double elimination, meaning you're allowed to have one loss without consequence. A second loss eliminates you from the tournament. Your team will compete against 10 other tribes, and you choose who you're going to challenge next out of the teams left in the tournament. When you start a match, you see the configuration of the enemy team and get to place your team of warriors on the battlefield to challenge theirs. You and your party of exiles will play alongside your warriors. So while this league does have many elements of an auto-battler, you're right there fighting alongside them. It's chess too. They've improved chess. Short time. If their totem is destroyed, then they are instantly killed and can't respawn. The team that destroys all of the opposing totems wins. If you're playing a hardcore character though, don't worry. Hinakora Have they made League of Exiles? Is that what this is? You can't permanently die in the afterlife. Like that. In the trial of the ancestors, strategy and tactics are key. Every unit has its own strengths and weaknesses that must be utilized to win matches. The turtle is really slow and really... I've been out of popcorn for a while now. I'm just eating the crumbs at the bottom. I'm just smushing the crumbs together with my fingers and then eating like a solid popcorn block. It's not great in the center or flank positions due to its slow movement speed. The Tuatara is a quick and deceptive unit, which is relatively well balanced for all positions. This version of the Tuatara has a stealth ability, which makes it perfect for the flanking position to sneak through enemy defenses and take out unprotected totems from the side. Mm. The Goliath of Might is a disruptor unit, and it's ideally placed in a center position to intercept enemies that are chasing you. You can also allocate it to defenses so that it disrupts enemies that are trying to kill your totems by stunning them. So in this match... Do you ever eat popcorn by just sticking your tongue into the actual bag or box and hoping that one bit of popcorn gets stuck to it? Acts the enemy front line, so the flanking to Atarek... It's the most efficient way of watching popcorn, because then you can keep watching the screen. Teamwork. <laughs> Upon winning a match, you earn favor and other rewards. I'll talk about the other rewards shortly, there are a lot. You have a separate amount of favor with each tribe, and you can spend it by talking to their chieftain to recruit warriors and purchase field items and equipment that your team can use. Min -max each extreme. tribe has specific specialities. For example, Hinakora's tribe manipulates life and death. Rongo Kurai's tribe is slow and tanky, with an emphasis on stuns and knockbacks. You can recruit warriors from many different tribes and mix and match them together into your team based on what you need. Field items are items that are placed on the battlefield and can be activated during the match to, for example, revive a warrior or heal your entire team. If a field item isn't consumed within a match, it persists onto the next match, but your warriors, their equipment, and your field items are all wiped between tournaments. You enter each tournament fresh. Your success in a tournament updates your overall ranking, which helps you in better rewards and subsequent ones. Speaking of rewards, let's discuss the good part, what you can earn for succeeding at the trial of the ends. You can tell this gets me excited. Okay. <laughs> you get this is just defense of the exiles. Visible when you're selecting which tribe you want to play against. 
They'll help inform your decision as some of them are regular rewards and some of them are there. And some of them are exclusive new rewards you can only get from the trial of the ancestors. I'm literally tripping over my words to get to the part where I can explain tattoos. <laughs> okay. The ancestors reward you with special tattoos that are not applied to your skin, but they're engraved on your soul. This I process can transform what your attribute skills on the passive tree do, basically the attribute highway nodes generally. The regular ones can only be applied to basic attribute skills and allow you to convert your tree's attribute highways into something more useful for you. For example, this one converts a small dexterity skill into movement speed. Trying to open it Each really tribe quietly. has its own exclusive passive tattoos. This tattoo converts a small strength skill into additional fire resistance. This one converts a small intelligence skill into additional lightning damage. And this one converts a small strength skill into one that summons a minion when you take a savage hit from a unique enemy. But don't go overboard on the number of skills you convert with tattoos, as you'll probably need at least some of your attributes left to equip items. <laughs> Each of the 10 tribes has an exclusive unique item that you can earn. These rarely show up as rewards for defeating that tribe in a match. Katava's Hunger is a unique majestic place that you can earn by defeating the Katava tribe. As you can see, it grants an immense amount of life for a single item. Look, I'm going to be real. The Path of Exile 2 hype was amazing. I can tell that a couple of people in this chat are not as into this. I'm going to be real. It's not my kind of thing either. So I'm just going to stare at the camera while eating a protein bar until something different happens, okay? You can earn by defeating the Arohongui tribe. It has the powerful effect of causing your flasks to instantly recover life and mana whenever you're low. This could potentially be a powerful panic button, or maybe you want to build around permanently being on low life or mana so all of your flask usage is instant. If you manage to win the entire tournament, you'll not only receive the reward for the final match, but Hinokoro will also give you a choice of three additional... Next. Sorry, button didn't work. Of three additional exclusive items, let's have a look at some of the things you may be offered. First up, there are four unique items that exclusively come from Hinakura for completing the tournament. This belt, for example, lists a plethora of really powerful properties, both beneficial and detrimental. While you're wearing the belt, the property shifts around every five seconds. You never know what's going to happen next. Will you always crit, always evade, never evade? Maybe you're able to find some ways to build around the detrimental effects to create as much upside as possible. Hinakora also has a selection of special, more advanced passive tree tattoos that you can only receive from her. This one transforms a 30 intelligence notable attribute skill into one that increases the level of all of your intelligence gems. You're only allowed one copy of the specific attribute combination tattoo on a tree. Hinakora can also award you with a new type of item called an omen. These are small items that sit in your inventory until a condition is met, at which point they are consumed and something happens. In this case, when you reach 25% life, your flasks are- Look, I have nothing to add to what he's saying, so I'm just going to eat this bar as sensually as I can. Maybe it'll be a gentle bite, maybe it'll be a rip. Who knows? Let's go on the adventure together. We made it for me. <laughs> it won't try to save your life, but it will save you some time. This one grants you Soul Eater when you level up. It's definitely worth carrying around for that occasional massive power boost. Omens are tradable but hard to get, so use them carefully. I shudder to think about how much this one is going to be worth in the presence of those incredibly rare unique weapons from 320. Now note, going off script again here, back in the day when we had stuff like the Prophecy and so on that let you upgrade to rare forcibly on a specific base type, we had to block the good items by putting crap, rare, crap uniques on the, um, sorry, I meant upgrade to unique, a currency item to craft something. This means, for example, you can know whether it's worth exalting your item because you'll know exactly what the outcome is. Hinakura's lock will slot into your crafting pipeline with powerful consequences. The Trial of the Ancestors offers a wide selection of valuable new rewards as you complete matches and tournaments. We really look forward to seeing what strategies you develop for building, equipping, carefully placing, and playing alongside your tribe. So that's the new Challenge League, but Path of Exile expansions contain more than just a new league every three months. In each update, we also augment Path of Exile's endgame and shift the metagame with new gems and balance changes. This expansion is no exception. I'm going to explain the other changes in a medium amount of detail. I'm conscious that we have both new and existing players. For new players, I'm going to try to include some extra content to help make the changes more understandable. You can find out all the detail in the patch notes and other information we'll be posting in the few weeks before release. Let's start with how the Trial of the Ancestors expansion expands Path of Exile's endgame. In December last year, we released an expansion called the Forbidden Sanctum. 
and see a comment in the chat saying this is the most uncomfortable sponsored stream you've ever seen. That's my goal. I aim to please. Notice how biting the lip is sexy, but only when it's the lower lip. Like, if you do that, it's weirdly sexy. But the other way around, it's just not as sexy. You know, no one's looking at that and going, ooh, that's the one. Like, you see someone doing a little bit, bit of a lower lip bite, just... I walk up to someone, I flirt, I'm like, hello. That's how it works. The Sanctum is core content in Path of Exile's endgame. You'll initially meet Divinia, the Sanctum NPC, in Act 10. Sanctums are now tradable items that you can find while playing maps in the endgame. A forbidden tome represents a whole floor of the Sanctum, and its rooms can be played back to back, or you can take breaks between them and do something else if you choose. Upon successfully completing that Sanctum floor, the next floor is generated as a tradable item with all of the state of your Sanctum run built in. This means that the item stores what boons and afflictions you had, what rewards you've locked in, and how much resolve you have left. You can then either play this floor or trade it to someone else if it feels more beneficial. For example, let's say you manage to lock in a really valuable reward. <laughs> the example here is a mirror of Calandra, but you'll also notice that, do I have a laser pointer? It doesn't work on the board. Okay, one resolve. Um, <laughs> this is an example here where the player has a very good reward locked in, but a massive pile of dangerous afflictions and only one resolve on them. If you don't feel capable of completing the rest of the Sanctum from this point, then it would normally be a write-off, right? If you gave this to me, no way am I getting that mirror. But you can now trade the Sanctum state to someone else who is willing to pay for the chance to earn the mirror. Or lose it. And, it, you know, you... You can look at expected value in economics. I need to do a poll in the chat right now. Do you think this is value for money? Do you think Grinding Gear Games got their value for money when they said, hey, Josh, can, you sponsor, can we sponsor you the stream? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll co-stream it. And it's just been 10 minutes of me eating a protein bar in silence while just staring at the screen. I need a poll because I'll need to send that data back to the people so they can see that it works. So hang on. Relics for now. A complete Sanctum run now requires killing the final boss, Lycia, in both her first and second form. She will always drop a unique relic, and these have been reworked and replaced as we rebalanced everything. An important aspect of the new Sanctum balance is that your primary defenses now have some effect on protecting your resolve. Your armor allows you to mitigate resolve loss, and your evasion grants you a chance to avoid resolve loss entirely, a lot like how armor and evasion work. Your energy shield grants you Resolve Aegis, which is a mechanic that works similarly to how energy shield behaves for life. In light of the new defensive opportunities and learnings from the original Challenge League, we've rebalanced the difficulty of Sanctum, especially in later floors, and have worked to add more monster and room variety to runs. We've added new, boss we've added new boons and afflictions themed around the new defensive mechanics and have rebalanced many of the other ones. Like other optional endgame systems that involve tradable items, players who don't want to play Sanctum can trade their Sanctums to other players. Did that just say, was it combustible concoction? If you can't handle me at my combustible concoction, you don't deserve me at my lustrous lacquer. Characters dedicated to Sanctum running and just farm Sanctums repeatedly in order to profit. Sanctum isn't the only improvement that Trial of the Ancestors brings to Path of Exile's endgame. We're also introducing 16 new Atlas passive... At Atlas Keystone Passives to the Atlas Passive Tree. As a quick summary for new players joining us, the Atlas Tree is a system that allows you to customize your endgame experience in Path of Exile. As you, complete difficult, as you complete different maps, you gain skill points that can be allocated in the tree. You could use these points to modify the behavior of different content you encounter in endgame maps to make it more difficult or more rewarding or to behave entirely differently. The system allows you to double down on the content you enjoy and avoid content you don't. Keystones are really impactful passives that totally change how endgame systems behave. Usually, <coughs> usually they have an element of give and take and require you to come up with new strategies to take advantage of them. Each of these 16 new Atlas Keystones changes how you might interact with Path of Exile's endgame. Let's have a look at some of them now. We will reveal the rest of them in, before the release of Trial of the Ancestors in a few weeks. Extreme archaeology completely changes how you play expedition encounters. Instead of, replacing, instead of placing a series of regular explosives, you now place one gigantic explosive. 
Every single chest or monster in the blast radius is affected by every remnant in that radius. Chris, stop moving. Speaker of the Dead He's makes it so that tormented spirits can possess you rather than possessing monsters. <laughs> Boosting your stats instead. While possessed, you can touch monsters just like a spirit can, making them stronger and more rewarding. It's, it's kind of getting silly at this point, isn't it? <laughs> Blight is like a tower defense minigame inside Path of Exile. The Cassia's Pride Keystone makes it so that Blight monsters take significantly less damage from players and significantly more damage from Blight towers. This basically lets you go all in playing like an actual tower defense game. Because we can. <laughs> Lucid Dreams makes it so that Val's side areas in your maps are no longer corrupted, meaning that you can use currency <laughs> items to change their mods. That I very much appreciate that a lot of Chris's design choice is because we can. <laughs> yeah, so we rebalanced the side area mods, we've improved reward outcomes, and we've made the downside mods a bit more punishing, you know, just to make it interesting if you try to go for the good outcomes. You may also rarely encounter a unique Val side area. Destructive play makes it so that the Maven will summon between one and three extra random map bosses when you are fighting witness map bosses. This keystone is analogous to the Eldritch still, Alter keystones that make those influences more difficult but more rewarding. There are another 11 new keystones that we'll reveal over the next few weeks. Together, these six... Well, now there's just a vest on my face. It's like I'm a weird extra from the Skibbity Saga. And it took like 10 minutes, but we'll put them in the news to save you some time here. In the Trial of the Ancestors expansion, we're shifting Path of Exile's metagame in several ways. So the first I guess you could say I'm pretty invested. I didn't make that joke up. I stole it from somebody in the chat. Let's have a look at a handful of these support gems now. In Path of Exile, war cries usually buff your party but don't directly hurt monsters. The Corrupting Cry support gem turns war cries into damage dealing oh, skills by moving. making them inflict corrupted blood on monsters affected by the war cry or by your attacks that it exerts. It's gonna put me there. The returning projectiles support gem causes projectiles from supported skills to return to you, piercing all targets but dealing a little less damage. Boomerang arrows. I think there's another example too. <laughs> the fresh meat support gem causes minions created by supported gems to gain adrenaline, critical strike chance, and critical strike damage for a duration after they're first summoned. So you've got to work out a way to keep refreshing your minions, and it makes them a lot more powerful. The Flamewood support gem causes totems to trigger projectile mortars at enemies that hit them. This is particularly synergistic with totems that can taunt enemies, such as Decoy Totem, or one of the new Chieftain Ascendancy skills that I might talk about shortly. The Sacrifice support gem works on spells that you either cast yourself or through totems. These spells now sacrifice a percentage of your current life or the totem's life to gain additional chaos damage based on how much life was sacrificed. The Frigid Bond good. support gem affects Link skills and causes a cold mist to come over them. Enemies caught in the beam are chilled and are dealt cold damage over time. This creates a new tool for a cold damage over time build requiring strategic placement of both yourself and your Link's ally. Garot mode. I mentioned it was going to get silly. The Locust Mind support gem looks OP and affects attack skills that use bows and wands. Instead of directly using the supported skill, you throw mines in an arc that use that skill for you, targeting your location when you detonate them. In addition to these gems, there are another seven that we'll be revealing over the next few weeks. In addition to the 14 new support gems, our balance work for the Trial of the Ancestors involved us revamping two Ascendancy classes. All right. These are the subclasses that you can specialize in as you play through Path of Exile's campaign. Each main character class has three Ascendancy classes available. 
In the last expansion, Crucible, we overhaul the Pathfinder and Saboteur. This time, it's the Guardian and Chieftain, which are specializations of the Templar and Marauders, respectively. While we were very happy with the theme of the Guardian, it was falling behind the power level and popularity of other Ascendancy classes. Our changes in this expansion have modernized the class and will present you with more relevant build opportunities than before. Brace yourself. Okay. <laughs> Path of Exile 102. Harmony of purpose can power up parties using link skills. Time of need now completely cleanses and heals you every four seconds. Radiant and Unwavering Crusade both fully embrace the Holy Summoner theme by giving you access to... I'm a Dungeons and Dragons player. I like books. I like lots of complicated rules. I'm a Warhammer 40k filthy meta gamer. Path of Exile is one of the few games that I look at and go, that's a bit much. This revamp was similar to that of the Pathfinder, the Chieftain has received the Saboteur treatment. To be honest, we were unhappy about many aspects of this Ascendancy class in its old form, and so we have completely... Don't get me wrong. It's a brilliant game. There's just no way in hell that I would be able to remember all of it. It's for people who want endless amounts of customization. Look, there's a bear with a hot hand. Enemies fire resistance while you're stationary, convert passive skills to apply to fire damage, and have your fire resistances apply to your cold and lightning resistances. I'll just give you a sec more to read. <laughs> All right, that's on the site too for you to check out. It's pretty powerful now. <laughs> to celebrate yeah, the release of the Trial of the Ancestors, we'll be hosting a boss kill event. To enter, create a hardcore solo cell phone character in the Ancestor League and race to kill all seven uber pinnacle bosses on the same character. Note that unlike the last event we ran, this one is not a ruthless event. We'll post more information about the event and its prizes in the news before release. Best of luck to everyone. For the Ancestor... a game, I always like it when they introduce a mechanic, then another, then another, and then stack them together. Path of Exile is one of the few games that I played. I got to a boss and I'm like, that's enough mechanics. You've stacked enough that this is good. This is a good amount of stacking. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic and do not affect the character's power or progression in any way, despite how cool they look. The Shade series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. All right. The sarcophagus back attachment imprisons an unspeakable evil that struggles to break fee. Nearby monsters send it into a frenzy, and enemy deaths provide it with souls to feast upon. <laughs> The Stygian Waypoint shackles visitors to your hideout in chains, yourself included. These chains are just cosmetic, though, and they break as soon as you move. It would supposedly be a gameplay advantage to be able to imprison people. <laughs> the Ferryman's armor set is so full of trapped souls that some of them try to escape. Moving while wearing the boots will leave souls in your wake trying to break free. That's a nice touch. The Infernal Portal opens a gate to the Nether Realm when you approach. This prompted a lot of internal discussion about whether using Hellfire to heat your hideout is actually safe and practical. <laughs> the demon-bound crafting bench allows you to enslave a malevolent entity to craft items for you. Be warned, it has a sharp tongue and will mock you mercilessly. You chained me for such a paltry use. The nebula character effect causes items you pick up to orbit you in an ethereal cloud of loot. <laughs> The Disciple series of support funny. packs also contains six exclusive microtransactions. Look at dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that in the top pack. <laughs> the Hero's Landing finisher effect summons a marble statue from the heavens to execute unique monsters you defeat. You decide whether it's the sword or the huge lump of rock that actually kills them. The Bell Tower map device heralds the opening of a new map with a peal of bells. Start to run out of portals, though, and it will reflect your desperate situation. Uh, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> the cathedral armor set reflects li refracts light through your character, creating beautiful patterns on the ground around it. If your life gets low, it responds in kind. That's really pretty. The Observer Diamond Flask summons a tentacled mass that fires its eye lasers at enemies you critically strike while the flask is active. Yeah. Again, cosmetic. The Currency Orb Charge Effect lets you pick from a number of different currency types to replace your charges with, as long as you've used that currency item any time from today onwards. 
Some people, we, we have to store it in the database, right? Some people you'll, will, be, will show they can be part of the exclusive club of players who have actually used a mirror of Calandra. This effect also causes your charges to display in town. So the theory is you go use your standard mirror, <laughs> which we all have, right? <laughs> The faithful hound pet is a very good doggo, and it knows a few tricks. You can command it to sit, roll over, or play dead. And yes, you can pet the dog. Game of the year. These new packs are available right now at pathofxl.com slash purchase, and purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of XL 1 and 2. Meanwhile, the Lithomancer and Enchanter packs leave the store forever at the launch of Trial of the Ancestors, so now is your last chance to purchase them. There's some good stuff in those too. Thanks for your continued support. The fun part. For the last ExileCon, we developed a special card game that encapsulated the full gameplay arc of Path of Exile over the course of the event. Players could defeat monsters, progressively upgrade their items, use currency items to craft their equipment, find and run maps, and eventually defeat pinnacle bosses to earn rewards. It was a whole lot of fun, and we've had so many requests to run it again. So this year, we're proud to bring you the 2023 version of the ExileCon card game. And like all Path of Exile expansions, it even includes a challenge league. <laughs> In your swag bags, you'll have found a box of Exocon cards, and then a gentleman outside will have asked to purchase them from you for real money. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any cards left, <laughs> you can use these to challenge GGG staff members who are walking around Exocon as monsters. They'll be wearing t-shirts showing the monsters' stats, which include symbols for their attack and defense. Using the cards in your deck box, and those you accumulate by defeating monsters, put together one set of armor, one weapon and shield, or a two-handed weapon, and an amulet and two rings. To defeat a monster, the damage on your weapon has to be equal to or larger than the defense of the monster, and the defense on the armor and shield have to be equal to or larger than the attack of the monster. Which is what Chris's shirt's, shirt is. Chris is the Exarch. He's the Searing Exarch with, like, seven attack and 14 defense. The staff members that you're fighting with the cards they've been giving you are the t-shirts that they're wearing. Chris is the boss. Introduce yourself and show them the set of equipment you want to use. If your symbols match, then you'll have defeated them, and they'll give you a reward and remove some of, your, of the durability from your items. They do this by clicking the card, so if you want to keep the card pristine, don't necessarily attack someone with it. It will get damaged in combat. Um, <laughs> be careful not to waste your best items on low-level monsters. You're not allowed to attack the same monster twice in a row, so you need to explore Exocon to find different GGG staff members. You can get maps by defeating monsters marked as gods. Take these maps to the map device to run them and progress through the tiers. On the back of the box is a list of quests. As you complete quests, you can visit the crafting bench on the top floor to receive rewards for completing those quests. <laughs> While you're there, you can also use your currency items to modify your equipment. I mentioned that this year's version of the card game introduced a challenge league. That league is Delve. Accumulate sulfite and bring it to the delve wall. Sorry for the bad photo, it's hard with lighting. <laughs> on the middle floor. Each sulfite card you hand in allows you to explore one tile of the Azerite mine. You'll all be working collaboratively throughout the event to delve deep into the mine, fight the monsters that lurk there, and uncover its treasures. And I feel really bad for the poor people that had to hang 3,000 cards on that wall. <laughs> You may eventually be able to challenge the pinnacle bosses if you manage to get really far in the card game. I'm the Searing Exarch, Jonathan is the Eater of Worlds, and Mark is the Maven. Defeating any of the three of us will reward you with a Mirror of Calandra enamel pin. This pin is exclusively available for winning the card game and won't be sold in the merchandise shop. Each person can only receive a maximum of two mirrors, and when they run out, we can't give any more out, so try to win the game early. The reason for two is a very typical Path of Exile reason, one for you and one to trade. They just can't not make systems. All right, it's almost time to go and experience Exilecon 2023. Aside from the card game, we've prepared a full weekend of activities for you. There's a busy roster of talks and interviews on the main stage and the streamer stage. We've posted a schedule at pathofexile.com slash exilecon, so you can see what is happening when and where. The schedule also includes information on meet and greet sessions. Our special guests this year include a roster of many of your favorite streamers, but also some game development industry friends we've met over the last 16 years. We're proud to once again welcome the creators of the Diablo series, David Brevik, Max Schaefer, and Eric Schaefer, as well as Travis Baldry, who you may know from Fate, Torchlight, and his popular fantasy books, or even the books he's narrated. 
They'll not only have meet and greet sessions, but are also participating in an Action RPG roundtable discussion alongside me and Eric tomorrow on the stage. In all of the developer talks and panels, ExalCon attendees will be able to scan a QR code on their phone to submit questions for the speakers to discuss in the panel or on the Q&A section of the talk. The path of Excel 2 ExalCon demo is a large one, and you may want to play it multiple times this weekend. In each session, you can pick from one of four character classes, which start at various points throughout the first four acts of Path of Excel 2's campaign. Around half of each act is... Cameraman's just messing with me. I swear to God, Chris cannot wake up and not design something. I'm willing to bet that when this whole thing was set, that wall of 3,000 things didn't even exist. The card game, not a thing. Chris knocked that up like an hour ago. He walked around to every single staff member and was like, wear this T-shirt. Progress. It's coming along really well, and we'd love to get your feedback on it. We've created heaps of new Path of Exile merchandise, which is available at our merchandise shop on the middle floor. We've made 17 new T-shirts, which include a few from our community T-shirt design competition. We've created a range of 24 enamel pins. You'll have found a random one in your swag bag. If you approach me and I'm wearing a pin, feel free to swap for the one you've got if you'd like. Happy to trade. He didn't even ask if you guys have phones. So the super exclusive Mirror of Calandra pin that is only available to winners of the card game. Maybe you're able to trade for a full set. There are two new posters. One is the Atlas Passive Tree, and the other is the Periodic Table of Currency. <laughs> In addition to reprinting the incredibly popular Celestial Cat socks, we've also introduced the Chaos Orb socks, better for business meetings. He knows his There's also a range of four desk pads to keep your play area tidy. You can check them out at the demo zone. We have a limited range of Exocon 2019 merchandise available in the store as well. Make sure to head it up early if you want some of this, because stocks of the older items are quite limited. We have plenty of new merchandise for everyone, though, and I think I might have underestimated that. <laughs> the Exocon livestream concludes tomorrow with our grand racing finale, where four players compete for up to $10,000 and the title of Exocon 2023 Racing Champion. Afterwards, we're hosting an after party at 8 p.m. at the venue. If you're watching from home, please note that because there are multiple things going on at the same time here, and we can only stream one of them live, we'll be restreaming three of today's talks tomorrow before the event starts. So to be clear, they're occurring here, people can watch them in person, but you can't watch them at that time because we're streaming something else. So we're going to restream those tomorrow in the three hours where it's way too early to do it in New Zealand, but you can watch them online from the States and Europe. Do you think they're just doing every single thing they wanted to do for like the last three Exocons? They're like, guys, we're doing it all. Excel 2 before the important Q&A in the morning where you get to ask the important questions. If you missed out on attending Exocon this year, we'll be at Gamescom in Germany in August and PAX West in Seattle in September. At both shows, oh, sweet, the Gamescom. part of Exocon 2 booth will have our Exocon demo available to play and a small team of Grinding Your Games developers, including me and Jonathan, to chat to, and we hope to see you there. Thanks so much for joining us this weekend at Exocon 2023. Have a great show, everyone. <laughs> All right, fair play. That was a solid presentation. No pre-rendered cutscenes. Lots of gameplay. Uh, didn't answer what gold is. That's a question I want to ask. G'day, Exiles. Welcome back to the second half, the post stall cast for you. I'm Ziggy D, joined by once again by Mathel, RiseQT, and Nugian. We're going we'll to listen to have a bit of a chat about we'll what chat we've seen so far, and there is a lot to go over while we distract you while we wait for the next upcoming segment, which will be Kuperian interviewing Jonathan about Path of Exile 2. So until then, though, let's have a little bit of a chat about some of the things we've seen. Uh, why don't we kick things off with the separation of Path of Exile 1 and 2 into uh, separate games and uh, what that means. What, do you guys have any thoughts about that, Mathel? Um... Yeah, apparently they didn't own enough of my soul. So, like, <laughs> instead of just, you know, playing as much as you want of um, Path of Exile League, oh, yeah, there, uh, so you know, maybe half of it, something like that, and then maybe do some other hair. things. Instead, you're pretty much locked in a cycle of playing both versions now with new launches con continuously. We've got a couple of people in the chat right now that say if anyone's interested in learning Path of Exile, they are willing to help. Uh, if you join my Discord, well, our Discord, I suppose, there is a Path of Exile uh, like, like subcategory where a lot of people chat about that and stuff. Lots of people willing to help. But be warned, Path of Exile is the kind of game where you need a wiki for the wiki because it is that detailed. Like, I've opened the Path of Exile wiki and I've clicked on something and it's been like, ah, I suppose, you know, these five other things that relate to it. I'm like, no, I very much need to know everything to go with everything. It is wikiception to learn it. It is a hell of a lot of stuff. 
And it's going to be for a long time. I think they have a very nice schedule with those last couple of weeks. Uh, you can find access to um, the Josh Drive Hayes uh, Discord from any of the videos on YouTube. Uh, they've all got a link in the description box. I should probably have a Discord bot post it on Twitch, but that seems... I've not got that set up right now. So someone can stick a link to it. Or, yeah, there we go. Sora's pretty much got me sorted. Sora's sorted it out. Sora knows what he's doing. Between one and two, you're just getting it all in one package with enough content to, like, just... Yeah. Oh. I think them separating the games the way they are does answer a lot of questions about like how certain PoE 1 things might have changed over to the new system yeah. and PoE 2 and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of expected that this, like this isn't super unexpected, but what was really unexpected for me was the fact that they're keeping up. Oh, the link apparently is also down in my Twitch panels. If, you, if you're on Twitch and you scroll down, there's like a panel to the Discord. There's also a panel to Path of Exile, which I actually didn't have to put on uh, as far as the contract went, but I... I wanted to put it there because I think this is a game that people should try and people should play. Office into two teams at that point and continuing development of both games. I actually spoke to Chris Wilson before. And I've done an interview with him on my on my main channel. There is a series I made called Devlog where I spoke to Chris Wilson for about two hours. He gave me loads of his time to chat for ages about the development and the design of Path of Exile, and he was a really nice guy. In fact, I'll share something with you. Uh, and. This is, I'm sharing this because I believe this shows a genuine passion and love for the project that Chris has created over most of his life and why he wanted to make such a good game. I actually got a message on Discord, because I've chatted to him before, from Chris earlier today. And let me just see if I can uh, bring this up and find it specifically. I'll let you know what it says. Um, it just says, hey, Josh. Heard you were lined up to uh, co-stream ExileCon. That's awesome. Really glad you can be involved. Uh, if you want to make video content later, let me know and I'll get you any assets we could provide. Uh, my understanding is this is not part of the obligation, so no pressure. But if you do anything, we'll try and help you out with that. Um, hope you're well. CEOs don't do that, man. Developers don't do that. People that love their product do that. And I don't want to just sit here and simp and shill because ultimately it's always about putting the audience, the player, the consumer first. You guys, I'm a gamer, you're a gamer. And from what I can tell, Chris is a massive, massive gamer as well. In fact, fact about Chris Wilson, he has one of every single Magic the Gathering card. So personally jealous about that. But one of the very, very few reasons that I've got a lot of time for Chris is simply because he doesn't act like a CEO. He acts like a guy that plays and makes games. The ice skills, the lightning, the just aesthetics. the world that they... Yeah, the aesthetics, ah. exactly. The world they built there. And just seeing the new classes doing their new things, like, it was exactly what I was hoping to see. Um, it was still... It was, at some times, I think, a bit slower than I would have liked, but that's... Now, don't get me wrong. They've made decisions that I disagree with. The next thing that's coming out with the whole kind of arena style PvP build your team thing, not particularly my thing. I'm not saying if you like it, you're wrong. It's just not going to interest me. I'm going to play Path of Exile 2 when that comes out. Path of Exile Zoom and get through it pretty quick if you really want to. I'm sure we'll get that later on, but um, yeah, it looked just crisp. Yeah, I anticipate that players will be playing that same content after a little while, twice as fast, right? With better oh, links, sure. better oh, gear, definitely. better builds, and so yes. on. For demonstration purposes, obviously slowed down quite a bit, but it gives us give you an idea of what they're going for there. And uh, showing that, I think, does allow for us to see a little bit of the idea of like, okay, so maybe we have the fast encounters, players are really crushing stuff really quickly, but then maybe like at endgame, certain bosses or certain bosses where you're leveling have those longer encounters, and this is what Path of Exile can do with that situation. Here's much more dynamic gameplay. We did see very two different, very different styles of gameplay too, from the monk and from the sorceress. Mm -hmm. One felt like a fighting game, and then the yeah. other one had like yes. meta skills and like a bit more like combination between those different spells. I've got to be real. Path of Exile 2 did look pretty cool. Like it looked pretty good. One thing that I will say, and this is across the board for everyone, we all know this: we do not pre-order. You all know that. We do not pre-order. We wait until the product is released. We look at some genuine, honest reviews that we trust. We decide what to do with our money. It is free, I understand, but if there's any kind of, oh, here's a bonus for this, here's a bonus for that. People message me saying, hey, are you going to pre-order Baldur's Gate 3? And I'm like, I really want to buy it, but no. So wait until it's released, look at some reviews, 
then we play through it. I know that Path of Exile 2 is going to be a free game, but if there is any kind of purchase this special cosmetic pack before the game comes out, no. I'm not saying there will be, but we don't. We know that. We wait until the game is released, then we buy it. Then we pay for it. Then we get some microtransactions if we want to. We wait to see what they can do with the game. We all know that. Feel to everything. Uh, where even as a, like in PUE 1, you had Flame Dash on every warrior. Oh, like on every Wilson warrior, to me. Duelist. No, he wouldn't. Everything, but like you were a spellcaster, but also a fighter. It's like, hmm. I'm going to message him being so like, what I the think, hell like, is going? they gold? can really lean into like the uniqueness of every character. And I think that's going to feel real good. Six player co-op seems pretty good. I like that. I very much like that. I mean, normally you see like four player co-op. Five player at most sometimes, but six player co-op, that's giving me old Baldur's Gate vibes. I like that a lot. Splitting the game feels like a blunder. Do you think it's going to be like an old school RuneScape, RuneScape 3 kind of split? Do you think it's going to be like a, a Maple Story, Maple Story 2 kind of split? Because there are, I mean, EverQuest and EverQuest 2 kind of split. Sometimes two different, I mean, Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. I still very much like Guild Wars 1. I think Guild Wars 2 is a successful game. They've managed to split, keep it down like that. Do we think they're having Path of Exile and Path of Exile 2? as two separate games is a good idea. Two different things and then make a full choice later down the line. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to have a big impact on melee as well as the casters. Yeah, this all kind of like weaves into what you were talking about, things becoming a lot more distinct. Like you, you can have more distinctive styles between each class, but also distinctive styles within that class where you've got a character that's swapping between two weapon types for melee or di different staves or different ones or whatever for that's a very good point you put in the chat it's much easier to play to play two action role play games than it is to play two mmorpgs an mmorpg obviously takes up a massive amount of your life and involves a huge time sink it will probably be possible to play both path of exile one and two for a couple of weeks and then take a break in fact when I was chatting to Chris about this, I said to him, do you not get scared and worried that people are going to get burnt out of your game and then stop playing it? And he said, no, actually, we, we build that in. We know that's a human trait of people getting burnt out, and so we actually design the game cycle around that happening, which is why every single league, if you will, is 13 weeks. And his focus on this was... If you know people are going to quit, which is inevitable when people play games, don't just design them to not quit. Don't just say, hey, come back, come back, come back, come back. Design very specific moments where you want them to come back. And that, for Chris, was the start of the leagues. He said, this is um, 13 weeks, and then this happens. Come back here. If you're burnt out, if you quit, if you don't like that, okay, totally fine. Return here and then see how that works for you then return here and see how that works for you that i respect he understands that player churn and player burnout is a natural part of an online game's life and instead of trying to keep people constantly hooked on that drip forever it was a case of leave play another game chill out here is a return moment for you which i like you build on the fly and maybe it's also working alongside and synergizing but different to your currently existing build on your other weapon swap so just having just even just having the icon on the ui and you can kind of figure out what the different things are and what your style is versus let's say you're in poe one you go to a vendor and all you're faced with is a row of different shaped stone and you don't really know what yeah. to do with it so i think that's really going to just open up like just your creativity on the fly yeah absolutely Definitely. A whole new level of speed running as well. Oh, yeah. I don't have to go back to town. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, well, Rise of Me doing the race tomorrow, and that'll be kind of like sealing off the PoE 1 era of racing somewhat. I'm super yeah. interested to see what happens with PoE 2, like competitive play in racing. Like, there's so much more that people can interact with there as well. I imagine weapon swapping setups being set up on the fly. and The weapon swapping did look pretty intense, to be fair, in PoE 2. The weapon swapping looked very intense. Like a lot of stuff with that. There's going to be a lot of depth behind it. It strikes me very much as the game that you're going to spend like an hour setting up everything behind the scenes. And then when you go into battle, just spamming abilities and the screen would look lovely, to be fair. And yes, it will be free. It will be free, but it will have cosmetic microtransactions. Well, like splitting that into so many more classes. So now, so we, what, we got a mercenary, a warrior. Huntress. Huntress, Druid. Sorceress and Druid. Yeah. Druid, yeah, there we go. 
I'm yeah. shocked they didn't show the druid. Maybe it's, and, that's it. yeah. and they didn't get rid of any. I thought they were getting rid of some. Like, I thought the Templar was gone. I thought Templar was... Been Will I be playing Baldur's Gate 3? Good question in the chat. I want to play Baldur's Gate 3 off stream because in a perfectly selfish way, I want to enjoy it. And if I play Baldur's Gate 3 on stream, I'm not going to be paying attention to the game. I'm going to be paying attention to how I can entertain using the game. Because when you actually focus on playing a game, you have to ignore almost everything else, including the audience on Twitch. So if I were to play Baldur's Gate 3 on stream for the first time, I would be sacrificing my own personal enjoyment of a series that I very much love in order to get more Twitch viewers because I would be one of the first people to play it through. And in a terrible business decision and a pretty good personal decision, I want to enjoy the game before I feel comfortable using the game as background entertainment to share with you guys. That's why I like playing old school RuneScape on stream, simply because I already know what's going to happen and so it's easier to entertain. It's why when I have a good build on Path of Exile 1 or 2, I'll be happy streaming that because I don't need to pay too much attention to run around and cast lightning onto everything. Do you need to just go for those big hits and make it work is such a cool concept. I'm really glad they showed the co-op gameplay because like you said, it looked really good in that boss fight, that second boss fight where yeah. one player was like really distracted. People have asked if I'm going to get a was it good for Baldur's Gate 3. So the next was it good is a classic RPG on the Game Boy Advance called Golden Sun. I don't know if any of you ever played the Golden Sun games. I actually never played them when I was a kid. I had a Game Boy Advance and my friends had Golden Sun, but I never played it. So I sat down to play Golden Sun and my thoughts so far, story's okay, it's not bad, serviceable, cutscenes are way too long and far too tedious, and the amount of text that could be cut, you could cut half the text from the game and it would play exactly the same. Some of the writing is absolutely tedious the cutscenes just drag and drag and drag and drag and drag and you have one character saying something another character confirming a third character questioning the first character reconfirming and i'm just like guys you've said the same thing five times you don't need to keep doing this so as far as cutting the actual kind of trimming the fat off the game if you will a lot of the cutscenes could be halved but the combat system has no right to be as good as it is i'm playing the combat system on golden sun i'm thinking why did more games not do this? It's fantastic. The, the small touches, like if you buy an item from a shop, it immediately asks you if you want to equip it. And if you say yes, it then immediately asks you if you would like to sell the item that it has replaced to the shop. And you click yes. So you don't need to do a load of finicky inventory management of buying something into your inventory, equip, back into the shop, sell. It's just like buy, equip, sell straight away in one smooth movement. That's beautiful. Uh, the the gin system or the genie system as far as equipping elemental stuff to your characters and then using their psi energy or synergy, however you want to say it, and then summoning them as attacks and then summoning them as prepared kind of elemental damage brilliant golden sun's combat so far one of the best rpg combat systems i've played through it's phenomenally good but i haven't finished it yet i think i'm almost at the final lighthouse and i'm very much enjoying it but no the next was it good will be golden sun and the next was it good after that will probably be an old playstation one game called nightmare creatures yeah and they were, they felt tighter like they were happening end to end. Like there was much less place for the exiles to maneuver. So those crowd control mechanics have a chance to play a real large role there. But also the dodge roll, feel, I feel like that shapes the combat in some way. I mean, most of the mechanics oh. looked pretty lethal. Like you yeah. really do yeah. have to get out of the way. <laughs> when we saw Neon die that first time, you could really notice and just the actual fear that he had for every attack on that second time after that. He'd, um, like there's <laughs> just one pretty just generic sweep. That's and true. you know, you could be a little bit away from it. I saw him run right to the end of the back just to make sure he's not getting hit. And almost every single attack that did hit him, if it combos a little bit, he's going to die. And it made. I will play through all of the gothic RPGs as well at some point. So I know you guys want me to play through gothic. Uh, that looks, uh, I'm very much enjoying and The Witcher 1 and The Witcher 2 at some point, so I will definitely be going through those. Why do I seem like I'm going to punch you in the face? You seem angry. I'm just sweating. That's what it is. I'm just really, really, really hot. Like, really warm. It's ridiculous. But no, Gothic, we will definitely play through. Ape Escape, lots of old things to play through. 
Lots of good stuff. I keep wanting to try and find a way to put Path of Exile on the MMO channel, but it isn't an MMO, so it's kind of difficult to do. Just so you guys know how popular this is, right now there are 130,000 people watching the actual main Path of Exile stream. That's massive. That's really bloody big. So here's what here's what I think is going to happen, guys, is I'm going to head off to bed in a second. Thank you very much for joining me as we watch through ExileCon. Genuinely excited about Path of Exile 2. Looks like a really fun game. Playing it through with six people, fantastic. I want to play through that as well. Uh, I will probably find some time to reaccustom myself with Path of Exile 1 within maybe a week or two. We'll do a stream where I just sit and play through that. You guys might have to help me out because there's a lot of stuff that I've probably missed. I'll play whatever the latest league is. But apart from that, I think this has been a good presentation. Hour and a half, kept it short, kept it sharp, kept it snappy showed us the gameplay, told us what's going to happen, gave us some examples, gave us good maths, and then left. That's fine. I'm okay with that. That is a good presentation. Hour and a half to show what you've done, what you've got, and when you can expect it. That is a nice presentation. There was no, you know, crazy pre-rendered trailers just to build hype. It was pretty much, here's the product. It's coming out soon. Look forward to it. I liked that. I mean, they looked like they had fun while presenting, which is always a bonus. People enjoyed it. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for joining me as we had this uh, lovely watch through on ExileCon. Uh, remember, if you have linked your Path of Exile accounts to Twitch and you've been watching, you've got drops in Path of Exile 1, which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, this was a sponsored stream, but I only took the sponsorship because I genuinely think Path of Exile is worth your time. So it's been super cool to work with Grinding Gear Games. I will see you guys sometime soon. Take care. Good night. And should we raid someone? Who's online? Luality is playing Baldur's Gate 3. Zeppler's playing Final Fantasy 14. Path of Exile is playing Path of Exile. I mean, we could just raid those guys. Who should we raid? Raid, raid Path of Exile. Should we just raid the main Path of Exile? No. You know what? Zeppler. Zeppler would never expect it. Zeppler's playing Final Fantasy 14. And is that 14? Yes, it is. Zeppler's playing Final Fantasy 14. Oh, she's watching the FF14 convention. You know what, fine. We will raid Path of Exile. Path of... We'll raid Path of Exile. <laughs> this target channel has disabled raids. You can't do it. You cannot raid Path of Exile. It's not allowed. You can't do it. It's banned. It's not a thing you're allowed to do. Sorry, guys. We tried. We very much tried. Let's see who else is doing what. Who's doing what? Boaty's playing Old School RuneScape. Luality's playing Baldur's Gate 2. We do like Bolt. Raid Zeppler. You know what? That's She'd appreciate it. If you're not a fan of Final Fantasy XIV, absolutely fine. But it's always nice just to see, uh, you know, when a load of people flood in. So I'll just, I'll get Zeppler's stream up on my phone because we like Zeppler. Zeppler's cool. And she's a nice person as well. She's been through a lot recently and I think she's a cool person. So let's just see. Yeah, she's there. She's been streaming for like seven and a half hours. What the hell? It's Zeppler HQ, isn't it? Street. There we go. It's Zeppler HQ. We may as well throw a load of uh, people over there just to see what happens, because it's always nice to see her little face whenever we get raided. Guys, have a good night. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's go and raid Zeppler. Take care. Good night. God bless.